Today we have the 2020 Kia Soul. Let me tell you, this thing is more high tech than ever and it is literally a party in a box. Can't wait to show it to you. We're gonna go through a full detailed review and test drive. Let's get started. The 2020 Kia Soul keeps its iconic shape, but it has an all new platform for better overall driving dynamics. It's futuristic and aggressive. It's even a little bit longer. Let's take a quick look at all the exterior details. Thank you so much for tuning in. So the GT line, which is what we have right here, is the sportiest model that you can get. I'll talk a little bit about the X line and some of the other trims as well throughout the video. Uh, but starting out here, the GT 1.6 liter turbo that we have, gets full LED headlights. And as you can see, it's got a slim LED daytime running light. Those are optional on the EX trim, the full LED headlights. Then we have LED fog lights and that turn signal down below. And you can see the sensor right there in the middle of that grill. That grill is definitely pretty unique. Uh, it's a large two-tone grill. The GT gets a unique fascia with a sportier appearance in comparison to some of the others. The headlights are gonna be different on every single trim. So. This one, like I said, has the full LEDs. Otherwise, for example, like the X-Line and the others have halogen bulbs, and the headlights are actually in the lower spot by the blinker and fog lights there. So I definitely prefer this setup compared to those. Let me know what you think down below. The actual performance of the headlights is excellent. These LED headlights do a great job. They don't bend or they're not dynamic and uh, swivel, but the beam is very high, it's wide, it's far. I've had no troubles whatsoever. They do an excellent job at night. Now this paint color is called Infernal Red and that is an extremely accurate color. This is very vibrant, very vibrant color. Let me know what you think down below as well. It really stands out. I mean, this thing is an attention grabber and as you can see right there, you still contain that, uh, that boxy shape with a little bit of a slope in the back, but just more aggressive up front and some different body lines here. Now taking a look at the wheels, the wheels are gonna range from 16 to 18 inch wheels, but our GT model gets these 18 inch wheels. And the GT also gives us, uh, since we have this turbo, we also get larger ventilated brakes in the front compared to the other models. Um, the mirrors as well are gonna vary a little bit. Some will be gloss black. Uh, we've got this little gloss black right here. We've got the turn signal in them as well because we have the top trim. The GT is also gonna get unique side sills with red accents. And as you can see, we've got a black belt line running across right there. You even have a little bit of a floating roof line design up there. I'll talk about the smart key system here in a little bit. Now, in terms of length, the Kia Soul is one of the shorter ones in the class. It's smaller than the CX-3, HRV, CHR, but this year it actually has a slightly longer wheelbase. It's got 6.7 inches of ground clearance. And if you're comparing it to the Kona, the Kona is about one inch uh, shorter than the Kia Soul. We have a sport tuned suspension with a torsion beam set up in the back. The sport tuned suspension, of course, is on our sportier GT line right here. Otherwise, you get a normal suspension, and we'll talk about how it drives in a little while. One thing that is nice every single model gets an LED high mounted stoplight up there, so you don't have to have a top trim to have LED. And then we have these three dimensional brake lights, which are pretty interesting. Uh, they look really bold at night. They definitely stand out. It's pretty cool. They're LED combination taillights on the GT 1.6 and optional on the EX. And then we've got this chrome center exhaust tip right there. It's pretty unique. Got that dual tip. Looks kind of cool. And then we even get these little fake vents right here as well. So no air actually flowing through there, but just a design cue. Now I just showed you the GT line. The X line is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna give you a rugged body kit with body cladding, over fenders for a chunkier look, off-road inspired accents, X line badging, unique different 18 inch wheels, and even an optional two-tone paint, plus fog lights as well, but halogen. Now in terms of safety, there are none of the active driver assist features on the base LX model, but standard on the S and the EX, you'll get the forward collision avoidance system with automatic braking, lane keep assist, driver attention warning, blind spot with rear cross traffic collision avoidance, and lane change assist so that when you go to signal, it will actually alert you if someone's in your blind spot. And then on the top, 
GT 1.6 liter turbo trim, it's gonna add the smart cruise control, pedestrian detection for forward collision avoidance, and a neat head up display. Now, as we make our way back to the cargo area, there's a really low touch pad down here to open this up, which is good and bad because you've got a really low load floor, so you don't have to hoist anything up to get it up and over. And just that first look right here, it doesn't look like a whole lot of space back here, but let me show you, there's something really cool about it. Uh, first of all, we've got this cargo cover that is uh, standard on the EX and GT Turbo and optional on all others. That also comes with a dual load cargo floor. And another thing before we take a look at that is this LED light right there, nice and bright, and a 12 volt power outlet. The 12 volt power outlet and light don't come on every trim though. But just to kind of give you an idea and reference, this is a carry-on suitcase right here. So let's go ahead and show you the cargo floor. All right, so I got the cover off. You can pull this up. And one, there's a spare tire on every single model. Slide this sucker down, get it in place. And look at that, look how much deeper that is. Quite a bit more space. So you're gonna get 24 cubic feet back here. And then when you fold the seats down, you'll get about 62 cubic feet with that. And the way you fold those down is with this right here. You can do it from back here and shove it forward, or you can go to the back seat. And when you have the cargo floor up, it's nice and flat and level with it. Otherwise, when you have it down like this, you just get some extra space. And the cool thing is, even with my carry-on suitcase standing up, it still fits underneath of this cargo floor or this uh, cargo cover. So pretty cool, definitely a nice practical big area for the Kia Soul. Now the front seats of the Kia Soul are going to vary depending on the trim. The base model all the way up to the low GT model are going to get six-way manual cloth seats. The EX is going to give you eight-way power adjustable seats and it's optional to get the synthetic material that kind of trims around the edge of the seat. The GT 1.6, what we have right here, is going to give you 10-way power adjustable seats with two-way lumbar support. And they are pretty comfortable, especially for a vehicle of this class. They are cloth with the synthetic sulfino material around the edge. I wish that they were completely full-on synthetic or full-on leather instead of a half and half, especially for the top trim and the price. But they are comfortable. They've got good bolstering around them. The headrests seem to be fine. And it even says sole on the seat. Now, if you want heated seats, those are gonna be on the EX and this GT 1.6 only. So the lower trims, it's not optional, you can't get it, and there's no ventilated seats in this vehicle. You'll get a leather steering wheel on the X line model and up, and it does have a pretty good range of motion, especially for a vehicle of this class. And if you want a heated steering wheel, it's gonna be on the GT 1.6 like we have right here. As we climb inside the 2020 Kia Soul, you'll notice that this is inspired from emotional visualization of sound. It's definitely apparent it's a unique looking cabin, but I think you'll like it. Starting out here on the door, we do have a softer material up above, not plush, but it is a softer touch material, which is nice. The GT 1.6 even gives us these satin chrome door handles, which is pretty cool. We've got a nice soft padded armrest. Although it is small, it seems to be in an okay spot for me an actual physical door handle or a place to store maybe your phone or something if you want to. The speaker grills right here actually illuminate around them, which is pretty cool. And I'll show you some night clips of that. Pretty good size storage down below and my large bottle even fits down here. And you can see we've got the Harman Kardon speaker system that you'll listen to in a second. Right on the inside, you can adjust your interior lights, your lane keeping system, your head up display, blind spot monitoring, and your auto start stop can turn off and on. And then your traction control. Now let's shut the door. Not a bad door door slam. It is a little bit of a wallop, but not too bad for the class. Now the key fob for the Kia Soul before we start it up, similar to the newest Kia key fobs with the lock button on top. No remote start on this actual key fob. You can do that with the UVO uh, system, the UVO app. Otherwise, we have push button start, and you can also do it to open up your tailgate. The smart key system is on the EX and the GT 1.6 standard. Otherwise, it's optional on the other GT. Now right up above, you can see the head-up display and it actually projects on this little screen right here. So it works just fine. It's, I still prefer one on the windshield, but I can see it with polarized lenses and it shows you all you need to. Right now, all you can see is the speedometer, but it shows you um, your blind spot information and your smart cruise control as well, which is pretty nice and your lane keeping system. 
Now taking a look at our gauges right here, you've got your regular gauges on the side and the information display in the middle is gonna change a little bit depending on what trim level you have. Since we have the top trim, we're gonna get the most amount of information and we can scroll through all this information on the steering wheel. So this at miles per gallon is not accurate. I was actually getting about 28 miles per gallon over a couple hundred miles and uh, that's not too bad for this vehicle. Um, I've been idling a lot and running it because I've been trying to keep cool. <laughs> so there you go, that's actually closer to what I've been getting. So I must have reset this one on accident before, but so far in the course of the time that I've had it with quite a bit of idling, averaging 28 something, and uh, a good amount of information that you can see on here. And then you can scroll through. You got a compass right here. You've also got your safety systems that you can see, even your driver attention level, tire pressure on here, and those probably need to be knocked down. Another thing is you can adjust your head-up display. You can change the brightness, the rotation, the height of it, all that. Uh, your driver assistance features, you can customize a whole bunch of stuff on here. So a lot of the customization is actually on this information display, which makes it nice and not nice. You just can't operate it while you're driving, of course, for safety reasons. The actual steering wheel is nice. We have a flat bottom steering wheel. Not all of them will get that. This does look kind of goofy. It almost looks kind of bulky and just uh, not quite so modern. There's a lot of gloss black on here, but all these buttons and switch gears seem to feel okay. They're plastic, but they feel pretty solid. We even have these metal paddle shifters. We'll go through those in the test drive. We also have rain sensing windshield wipers, which have not worked at all on this vehicle. I put it on auto and nothing happens. So first time that that has happened in a vehicle but the steering wheel is comfortable we've got these nice bulky sport grips and even this red stitching running around the inside on this leather wheel as we take a look across the rest of the dash this upper material isn't necessarily like soft but it's kind of a nicer material this over here is a little bit softer then you've got quite a bit of gloss black around there and even some down below which gloss is not my favorite because it does get scratched up and kind of attracts your finger smudges now, as you can see, we have the large 10 and a quarter inch screen, which is standard on the EX and GT 1.6. The seven inch screen is gonna be standard on lower trims, the LX, S, X-Line, and regular GT, which will give you a six speaker system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard. Now, this 10 and a quarter inch screen will give us an additional HD radio, Sirius XM, uh, navigation and then our particular model gives us the Harman Kardon with the subwoofer system including speaker lights which are pretty darn cool. So on the home screen right here, we've got a few different things and you can customize what you see. I really like this setup. Uh, we've got physical buttons down below so you can go straight to your map, straight to navigation. You can have a custom button right here. You can choose what it's for. So you can have, I, this right now is set up for the sound mood, the mood lighting. And there's several different things that you can scroll through on here. It's, it's pretty cool. The speaker grills light up the area next to your passenger's footwell lights up and it kind of beats to the music and you can customize that if you want you can have it just glow or you can have it dancing for you as well but um, the system works well it's responsive enough and the screen is nice it's it's pretty much all that you could ask for on a vehicle of this class and i definitely did not expect a screen this large right below that we've got dual zone automatic climate control Everything feels kind of plastic up here, but that's what you'd expect in this class. This looks pretty old school to me, just that red lighting, but you've got easy to use fan speeds. You can automatically control stuff and sync it with your passenger if you want. So everything is easy to use. The dual zone AC is gonna be on the EX and GT 1.6. And also on the EX and GT 1.6 is a wireless charging pad right down there. And even if you don't use it as a wireless pad, you've got a nice little storage bin Plus, you've got some extra storage right down here. Now, in a smaller vehicle like this, I think storage is great to have because you don't always expect that. We've also got a 12 volt power outlet and two USB ports. We've got two tier heated seat function and you can control your drive mode between normal and sport and the heated steering wheel button as well. The shifter does feel pretty nice. 
it's got a good feel to it. You can move it into the M mode or the S mode for uh, your own shifting as well. All of the soles actually get a real handbrake with the mechanical cable, which I prefer. One thing I was surprised with was that there's not an auto hold button to hold you in brake though. My large bottle does fit in here. They have some, uh, some little things to hold some smaller items and that works pretty well for me. The center console right here is a little bit wider than I expected, but not really all that wide. Not a whole lot going on in there, but it is deeper than I expected. Even though it's a smaller vehicle, we have a pretty large visor that does move out like that. You've got some lighting with a vanity mirror as well. There's even a sunglass holder and a sunroof up above, just your typical size sunroof. You've got LED lighting in addition to that. Even though this is the top trim, we don't have an automatic dimming rear view mirror or garage controls, but that is an optional feature on every single model. Now, in terms of the visibility, I always like to take a look at this. Since we have a boxier shape, it's really not that bad, but you do still have a pretty big pillar back there, but that back window is bigger than you think, and it's, it's really not that tough to see out of here, especially with your blind spot monitoring and the correct setup with your mirrors. And even over my shoulder, I've still got a pretty good gap right there to look in my blind spot. Now in the back seat of the Kia Soul, I've got this seat all the way back. And at five foot nine, I'm sitting here, my knees do touch it, but this is all the way back. Sitting behind myself, I've got pretty good knee space. Sitting up tall, I've got good head space, really good head space. In fact, only the Honda HRV has more combined legroom than this does. And this is still even shorter. This is a very impressive back seat for a vehicle of this size, especially the headroom as well. Now we also get a center folding armrest, which is nice. It even has a couple of cup holders as well. There's no direct AC vents that come through back here, but I've had two people back here almost the entire time I've had this vehicle and they've never complained. Unlike the Mazda 3 where they complained the whole time I had people with me because the two front vents can kind of point directly back here and the airflow seems to be pretty good. There's also O-blank handles back here with the hook on the driver's side, even LED lights up above us as well. This front passenger seat has a seat back pocket, which is only on the EX and the GT 1.6. And even the headrests can adjust up and down only on the EX and GT 1.6. And we have a one USB port back here, which is nice to see. Now, just for fun, I'm gonna scooch to the middle. And sitting in the middle, it pushes me forward a little bit, so I can't sit with this seat all the way back but there's not that big of a hump in the middle and I can still sit here without my head touching. So dang, I never realized how spacious these Kia Souls were, but this boxy shape really helps out and it's, it's a nice place to haul some people around. The 2020 Kia Soul gives you three different powertrain options, one of them being an EV model. But another thing to know is that Kia gives you a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. One of those powertrain options is a two liter new engine, which is multi-port injected. It can get up to 33 miles per gallon on the highway with an intelligent variable transmission. So another continuous transmission, but they do it a little bit differently. And then there is a six speed manual available, but only on the base model. Otherwise you get this direct injected 1.6 liter twin scroll turbocharged four cylinder engine that is quite peppy with 201 horsepower, 195 pound feet of torque paired with a seven speed dual clutch transmission only. That's the only option for this engine. And then miles per gallon is gonna be 27 city, 32 highway, 29 combined. And this is front wheel drive only. All right, thank you so much for sticking around. Now, if you've watched this far, and if you're not familiar with my channel, I do all sorts of different videos. I do some short reviews, long reviews, night videos. I just started doing night videos, uh, test drives. So subscribe down below if you wanna see more videos like this. Now my first impression of this 2020 Kia Soul is that it sits up higher than I expected. When I first got in here, when I first, I've never driven one of these before. So getting in here, I was surprised to see that I actually sit a little higher in the cabin, but I still have a lot of headroom. I was expecting it to be a little more like a car sitting low, but Kia says this is a crossover. Now right off the bat, let's go ahead and get on it. Normal mode. And it's a peppy little thing, that's for sure. And the brakes, the brakes are also good. And the nice thing about this model is we get bigger front disc brakes. So that's pretty cool. Even though you get more power, you get a sportier vehicle, you still get better brakes, which is the way it should be. 
And after driving this thing around for about a week, I've had people in here most of the time, four people in here, most of the time I've had it, and it's been just fine. It hasn't felt laggy at all. It hasn't been underpowered, and this is obviously the more powerful option, and it's very, very quick. The steering feel is not too bad as well. The handling is okay. It's not as good as I was hoping for, considering it's a sportier model for this and it's got a sport tuned suspension. But um, honestly, I think that they definitely, it's definitely a stiffer ride. That's the thing with this sport tuned suspension. I can only imagine the other vehicles with the smaller wheels and not sport tuned suspension ride much better but this is kind of stiff over some stuff it's nothing harsh it's nothing bad but it's just definitely more on the stiffer side and the handling has been fine and we'll push it around some corners in a little in a little bit as well but as you can see it's it's easy to drive it's comfortable to drive you've got great visibility in here passing is also no problem we're just going about 45 right here and if i step on it we go it goes quick. It definitely gives you a push in the back. Now, the one thing that I've got to complain about with this dual clutch transmission is that when you're having fun with it, it's great. It's quick, it does fine, it shifts pretty fast. But the thing is, when you're at some regular speeds, kind of just cruising through town, especially stop and go, this transmission is jerky. And even first gear. I mean, it's you know, it basically feels like a manual transmission, and that's what you get with this dual clutch. But low speeds taken off, it's it's kind of jerky, especially when you're, I mean, especially just in day-to-day -day driving, it can get kind of annoying. Let's go ahead and have a little bit of fun here. And it's quick. I mean, that got us past 60 right there. And there's even a little screen in front of me that shows me the turbo boost. And going around this corner right here, it holds its own. You can definitely tell that it's got a higher center of gravity. It doesn't want to grab as well, but still, it's a car that you can have fun with. And if you're going to get the Kia Soul with this engine, you want to have some fun. That's the reason that you get it. And you can have some fun with it. Once it shifts down, you definitely get some power. You get some torque down low, which is nice. I'm gonna use the paddle shifters. We're in fourth, downshift, not the quickest, but those upshifts, those upshifts are good. The upshifts are very quick. The downshift, not so much. And the brakes, as I get on the brakes after that, the brakes do a really nice job. Now I got it back in normal mode, and one thing that I was impressed with, at least it was pretty good, was the noise, vibration, and harshness. I haven't had any rattles in here whatsoever. Uh, I took decibel ratings on a couple different road surfaces, and it did well. It did pretty well. It was quiet enough, and you know, it probably it met my expectations and maybe exceeded them a little bit. And that's one thing Kia wanted to do was make this quieter with less vibration and harshness compared to last generation Kia Soul. The biggest pro to this is just how small it is. It's a small exterior body and Kia is fantastic at this with pretty much all of their vehicles. With a small footprint, there's a ton of space in here. Passenger space, the overall interior space, legroom, headroom, cargo space, even that dual level cargo floor is fantastic. Now let's go ahead and put it in sport mode again. Took a little bit to kick down, but once it did, we we're good to go. And now you can tell I'm on a louder textured road and some road noise gets in here, but it's really not that bad considering this class when you look at some of the others in this class. Now here's the deal. If you don't care about a sportier vehicle like this GT line with the turbo, I would probably go for the EX model. Now, the only thing I really complain about those other models is that they don't all get the full LED headlights like this does, and the halogen bulb sits lower on the grill or lower on the front fascia. So the EX can get LEDs, and I would go for the EX because you get similar features to this top end model, 
but you get slightly better MPGs and it's still probably good enough coming from that two liter engine that I've driven in uh, some other vehicles. But really, this is honestly an excellent urban adventure practical vehicle because you can shove a lot of stuff back there. You can haul all your people around. It's gonna be relatively efficient. If you want efficiency as top priority, definitely go for a sedan. But that's gonna wrap things up. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave your comments below what you think of this 2020 Kia Soul. Subscribe for more videos and I'll catch you next time. Have a great rest of your day.